Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. WandaVision has finally ended, wrapping up the story of Wanda's sitcom reality while also setting up future projects in the MCU. But the finale did leave a lot of you with unanswered questions and plot holes that you asked me to solve on my Twitter and our community page. So I'm going to do my best to answer all your questions and solve all the plot holes in WandaVision. Here's one about Doctor Strange. Why can the Sorcerer Supreme sense Loki and Thanos, but not this huge disturbance? Now, this is one of the drawbacks of the MCU. Way back in Phase 2, when Thor, Iron Man, and Cap were in trouble, we were all asking, why don't they just ask their super friends to come help? Where are the Avengers? At least Ant-Man directly says this. I think our first move should be calling the Avengers. So now, when something magical goes awry, we expect Doctor Strange to show up, especially since it's happening so close to him in New Jersey. Except, we don't know where Strange actually is right now. He might be in the Sanctum Santorum, or he could be traveling to some other dimension. So you might be wondering, how come none of the other wizards checked out this disturbance? Well, I mean, maybe they did. Maybe Wong and some other sorcerers showed up, they couldn't break the barrier, and then they went back to study and wait on Steven's return. After all, Avengers Endgame did show us that the Ancient One was also fighting off the Chitauri invasion. Wouldn't Wanda be the Sorcerer Supreme if she's more powerful than Strange? No, because being the Sorcerer Supreme is a title earned through mastery of the mystic arts. It's not like being a Highlander where only the strong survives. One day Wanda could become knowledgeable enough to take the title from Strange. But it is not this day! What's with the date on the calendar? Well, it's the first day that they live in Westview together. It has a heart because Vision drew a heart on the Westview deed. It's significant that they can't remember because Wanda's trauma made her black out her previous life, at least until she's reminded of it by Monica. He was killed by Ultron, wasn't he? Why was Wanda broadcasting the show to the outside world? Well, she didn't know she was broadcasting the show. Like everything else in Westview, this was running on pure instinct. We learn in Episode 4 that the WandaVision broadcast is carried through Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, or CMBR. This is the same radiation released at the Big Bang that also shows up in TV static. Wanda's powers come from the Mind Stone, also produced in the Big Bang. So, Wanda recreates reality using Infinity Stone energy, which is then carried on the analog signals that display CMB radiation. I thought it was pretty ingenious. Now, a lot of you asked about Evan Peters as Pietro, calling this reveal disappointing. Now, this is something that we're going to run into a lot. WandaVision released week to week instead of the Netflix dump and pump all at once style. Because we only got a tiny bite of the story every seven days, this allowed us to wildly speculate. And I do mean wildly. I was right there with you. Is it all a dream? Was it Hydra, the Kree, Mephisto? How do hexagons connect to the bees? Not the bees! Ah! All of that was a lot of fun. But you can't be upset when your fan theory just wasn't right. When we saw Evan Peters, we're supposed to make a connection between him and Pietro. We're supposed to think, oh, he could be the new Pietro. Why? Because that's what Wanda thinks at that moment. This is the only actor they could have cast to make us wonder if this guy was the real deal. This makes us empathize with Wanda even more, and it was a brilliant move. Both us and Wanda were disappointed that he wasn't Pietro. Some of you also asked how he got his powers. Well... It's been Agatha all along. Monica even sees that the hemp necklace is radiating with Agatha's energy. It was how she was controlling him and the source of his super speed. But is there a multiverse link? I don't think so. The Fox X-Men movies are probably part of the MCU multiverse, if only because Disney owns those movies now. But don't expect any characters except Deadpool to pop up in the MCU. Mostly because Marvel might want to cast one of the Fox X-Men actors in a different superhero role. Who was Jimmy Woo's missing person? They never say, but I think it was Ralph. It would explain why he had a headshot, and I could see this guy being a low-level thug who got in over his head and turned rat. Now, it seems like an amazing coincidence that the missing FBI witness happened to be in the same town where Vision bought Wanda an empty lot to build a house on. But think about it. Vision had connections to the government. He could have bought this lot through a government program that offered cheap housing in depressed areas, the same places where they stash FBI witnesses. Maybe they even wanted Vision there to keep an eye on the witness in case trouble started. Who's Cliff? Cliff, you may not have noticed, was the FBI guy that Jimmy called. Cliff, uh, James Wu. And that's it. Not everyone has to be a secret hero or from the comics. Sometimes a guy can just be a guy. Similarly, some of you asked about the relevance of the mailman. Don't shoot, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> Don't shoot, I'm just a messenger. Some channels overanalyze this statement, thinking that he was the witness or Mephisto or whatever. I think he was just a pizza guy who Wanda turned into a mailman and then she gave him some corny lines. And that's okay. 
Wanda made a sitcom reality, not an interconnected network of Satan worshiping automatons whose job was to spout clues about necromancy. And then there's this. Dottie is the key to everything in this town. Now this seemed like a major clue. Agnes brings attention to Dottie, so she's gotta be Mephisto, right? All right, well, hold on. Remember, Agatha's goal was to ultimately absorb Wanda's powers, but first she wanted to learn about her and test her limits to learn if she was really the Scarlet Witch. You know, someone capable of spontaneous creation. I think Agatha wanted to see if Wanda could create children. So she tells her to focus on Dottie, gives her hints about having kids. School admissions. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. And then Agatha mind controls Dottie and the town. For the children all to influence Wanda to create life. She killed Sparky to encourage Wanda to raise the dead. Fix the dead. You can do that? Ultimately, Agatha was always going to absorb Wanda's energy. She just wanted to know what she was dealing with first. Here's another one. If Agatha wanted Wanda to force her to use her magic, why not just attack her in episode one? Because she was trying to gauge her strength and figure out what she was before rushing into absorbing her magic. This is what episode eight was all about. Speaking of Dottie, Sarah Proctor says, I have a daughter, she's eight. If you could just let her out of her room. So Wanda subconsciously kept the kids locked away, which Fiatro basically told us. I assume they were all just sleeping peacefully in their beds. No need to traumatize me on the occasional holiday episode cameo, am I right? The question is, how did they stay alive? Were they comatose? Did they eat? I think Wanda kept them asleep in suspended animation. We've actually seen this before with the Odin sleep. Were Dottie's yellow roses a ploy? They were just yellow roses. Here's a good one. Because we're all what? Now you remember this exchange with Herb, Agnes, and Vision. Because we're all- Stop it! Is it because we're all dead? Asleep? In hell? What is it? What is it? The answer is, there is no answer. Agnes was just trying to rouse Vision's suspicions to shake Wanda loose from her reality. Remember? I tried to be gentle, to nudge you awake from this ridiculous fantasy. Why were there so many Mephisto teases? There were no Mephisto teases. We read too much into this and that's okay. The book from the opening credits of episode three is not a Mephisto tease. The cicadas are not a Mephisto tease. As far as I can tell, there was just this line. The devil's in the details, Bev. That's not the only place he is. Agnes could just be throwing a sick burn on Dottie, or maybe, as a witch, Agatha does know about Mephisto and we'll see him later on. We all thought the rabbit's name could be a double meaning for Old Scratch and it wasn't, and that's just fine. So what happened to Senor Scratchy? Lots of fan theories about Senor Scratchy. Is he the devil? Is he Agatha's son Nick Scratch from the comics? Is he going to transform into a monster and kill everyone in Westview? Well, it turns out that that was the original plan. Director Matt Shackman went on Kevin Smith's podcast and revealed that they did shoot a whole sequence in the finale that was cut. Apparently, Monica, the kids, Darcy, and Ralph all went to Agatha's basement to capture the Darkhold. Then they would have fought Senior Scratchy, who would have transformed into a giant monster with big pointy teeth. But the sequence was cut because it took focus away from Wanda and the Vision. Ended up, you know, moving it aside because it was a huge sort of detour in the middle of everything else that we had going. Let me know if you want to see that deleted scene in the comments below. Now, is Agatha's bewitched basement in Ralph's house? Now, this one threw me too at first. I was thinking, gee, it's quite a coincidence if Wanda happened to end up next door to a house with a witch dungeon in it. But maybe when Wanda entered this dungeon bit, she did so magically, like when Thor walked into Asgard in Age of Ultron. Fortunately. I am mighty. And later, there were those weird purple vines branching out from the cellar. It looked like Agatha's influence was spreading outward from this spot. So, what's going on? Well, remember how Agatha was able to make the dark hold appear from nowhere? I think she can do the same with her little lab here. It's like a mobile home. The vines are a reflection of the roots her energy has put down in this spot. But look, here's my main thing about this. I don't want magic explained. I want the mystical to remain mysterious. The MCU has gone out of its way to rationalize the supernatural. As guardians or aliens. We are not gods. We're born, we live, we die. Just as humans do. Doctor Strange taps energy from other dimensions. Let's just let magic be magic and unexplainable. Like the Force. That's not how the Force works. <laughs> Where did White Vision go? Good question. Remember his mission. My programming directive is to destroy the Vision. Then after... Uh, Vision Vision unlocks the memories buried inside White Vision, he says, I am Vision. So if he was Vision, why not stay and help Wanda? I think it's because he has Vision's memory and body, but not his soul. The essence of Vision's emotions were inside the Mind Stone, hence his connection to Wanda. I just feel you. 
So White Vision remembers being with Wanda, remembers loving her, but now she's just somebody that he used to know. Somebody. White Vision could have left to destroy himself and finish his programming. Like Nomad in Star Trek, the robot Kirk tricked in destroying himself. You are flawed and imperfect. Execute your prime function. But they're definitely gonna bring this character back. So I think he just went away to compute for a while, think things through until he's needed in the next movie. Why was S.W.O.R.D. in the show? They accomplished nothing. Okay, kind of true. S.W.O.R.D. didn't save the day or arrest Wanda. But narratively, they were vital to telling this story. Without S.W.O.R.D., the audience would have had no point of view characters, no way to explain what was happening inside the Hex. It would have just been the sitcom reality until Agatha broke character. How did White Vision get through the Hex? He phased. What was Hayward's master plan? All right, I think Hayward was traumatized by the snap. He lost people and he vowed to never let this happen again. He doesn't like superhumans and wanted the human race to be in control of its own destiny. Remember, he changed the name of the agency from sentient world observation to sentient weapon observation, and he mocked heroes. No funny nickname. Not a one. So he wanted to control the vision to fend off other threats, including the threat of other superheroes. Yes, he was doing this secretly against Vision's final wishes, but he reasoned that if he could deliver a fully functioning, obedient vision to his superiors, they wouldn't care how he got it. How did Hayward know that Wanda was capable of bringing the vision back, or did, was he just nudging her? You're talking about this. Not everyone has the kind of power that could bring their soulmate back online. I think that they had tried every other power source to bring the vision online, and he wanted to give Wanda a shot. He even alludes to this in episode 8. Tried every type of power supply under the sun. Why did the alarm go off in episode 5? All right, so when Darcy sees that they recast Pietro, there's an alarm going off in the background. Some fans thought this meant that Pietro had breached the barrier because he came from the multiverse. I never read that much into it. See, Wanda had just emerged from the hex and changed it red, probably raising the level of radiation. This would have taken the base from yellow to red alert. She also dropped off a drone coursing with her energy. There's plenty of reasons here to set off alarms. Is Agnes still trapped after the hex collapses because there aren't runes to bind her? Now, this confused me too at first. Wanda places runes on the hex. This prevents Agatha from casting a spell, the equivalent of a cop yelling freeze. Then she turns her into Agnes. Agnes can't perform any magic. This is a supernatural version of slapping on the handcuffs. So when the hex collapses, it doesn't matter that Agatha can't cast a spell because now she's Agnes. Who was Paul Bettany's secret cameo? Yeah, remember this? He said, I get to work with one of uh, an actor that I really admire and that I've always wanted to work with. And then on Thursday, he admitted that fans started guessing who it might be. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to be so disappointed when they find out it's me. Yeah. Let's take a couple questions about Monica. Does she still have her powers now that the Hex is gone? Yes. The Hex changed her cell structure, remember? You've gone through the boundary twice already, Monica. The energy inside has rewritten your cells on a molecular level twice. She even displays powers outside of the Hex. Does Monica have more powers or did we only see a glimpse? My guess is that we only saw a tiny fraction of her abilities, those that she would use instinctually. In the comics, Monica can turn into light and travel through space, and so I would expect to see that in the future. I'm pissed about the aerospace engineer. Why? Monica says she has a friend. The friend made her a thing. The thing didn't work, but it forced Monica to embrace her powers. Yes, there was speculation that the engineer could be Reed Richards, but the Fantastic Four hasn't even been written yet. John Watts is still filming Spider-Man No Way Home. He's not even in pre-pro for the Fantastic Four. Just be patient. The Fantastic Four will come. Mutants will come. Everything is on the way. Calm down. And Tiana Paris fueled speculation when she said that she was excited for this episode. But that was because she would get to reveal her powers, not because it teased more movies. I mean, do you think Tiana Paris is a massive Fantastic Four reader who was pumped to be in a scene with Reed Richards? Or do you think she was excited to become a superhero? Why the commercials? Now, I actually did a very in-depth breakdown about the commercials that I'm extremely proud of. Check that video out for more detail. But basically, they document Wanda's emotional journey throughout the series as she comes to term with the traumas that she's endured in her life. Why hexagons? Oh, the hexagons. They were everywhere. The credits, the shape of the anomaly, on Jimmy's whiteboard. We even did a video breaking down everywhere hexagons appear in the MCU and looking for connections. But most importantly, there was one drawn behind the Scarlet Witch and the Darkhold. This is showing us that the Scarlet Witch's powers manifest as hexagonal shapes, a nod to Wanda's hex powers in the comics. There's already a standard for this in the MCU. 
the sorcerers practice eldritch magic, which manifests as symmetrical shapes. So why is the book The Darkhold when The Darkhold from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is way different? So yeah, we've seen a version of The Darkhold before back in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4. And this could be the same book. It's a magic book, so I guess it could change its appearance. But I don't think so. Sorry, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fans, but that show is not part of the timeline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thanos' snap did not happen on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., therefore it's in some kind of an alternate reality. Precisely. And that's okay. We can still enjoy that series without Quake joining the Avengers. The show became very good on its own merits. In fact, it became better when it stopped trying to tie into the MCU. So here's a big one. Why wasn't Wanda arrested? Well, who would arrest her? Her response would have been this. I don't think I'll let you arrest us today, Behan. Maybe Monica could have tried, but she says in the show that she doesn't blame her for what she did. Given the chance and given your power, I'd bring my mom back. Now, for me, this was the finale's big flaw. Wanda doesn't apologize to the townspeople or show much remorse. We don't even see the kids come out of their rooms to hug their parents. Is Wanda astral projecting at the end? Yes, I think so. Now let's talk about the twins. Why can't Agatha and Wanda control the kids? And what does this line mean? Thanks for choosing me to be your mom. Now the show doesn't spell this out, but here's my take. The kids are actually lost souls. Maybe shards of a demon or reincarnated people. I don't know. But I picture it like the movie Soul, with all these little tadpole ghosts walking around waiting for a body to inhabit. Why were the kids' voices at the end? Well, that's what we're going to learn in Doctor Strange 2. Wanda may have created the kids' bodies, but those bodies were inhabited by spirits that are trapped somewhere in, in the multiverse of madness. So how does all of this lead into Doctor Strange 2? I think Wanda's quest to find her kids is going to make her cross paths with Doctor Strange. Either she'll seek out his help, or she'll open some portal accidentally that will cause some kind of mess that he has to fix. She might even align with the movie's villain or Baron Mordo to save her kids. But we've already seen her be manipulated by a villain before, so I doubt we'll see it again. What happened to the beekeeper? Not the bees! Ah! When Wanda rewound time, the beekeeper re-entered the manhole. So I think that he's been in the sewers comatose just like the kids in their bedroom. And finally, what was the point in the series? Super fun to watch, but brought nothing new to the table. What the f*** are you talking about? It progressed Wanda's character and made her a major player in the MCU. It introduced a new superhero. It brought Vision back to life and showed us that Jimmy Woo mastered his trick. But most importantly, you already said it. It was super fun to watch. In a worldwide pandemic where we can't go to the movies, isn't that enough? WandaVision was great. That's the point. Any other questions, thoughts on the finale? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.